And uh, we are here with a new season of our podcast. Let's go. We're missing two names, but we have a new name. <laughs> Welcome, yeah. name. Welcome, Aaron or McFistpalm TV, as he goes by Thank on Twitch. <laughs> the McFister. The McFister. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> yep, yep. Let's go. Um, Caleb and uh, Asian were unable to make it, so we are holding down the fort for the homie. But yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. We're gonna hop. We're probably gonna hop straight into predictions. This is a bit of a unconventional start to the year, but we got it. It's okay. But got it. We'll probably do a Super Bowl MVP prediction at the end of this. But we're gonna start with the game predictions now. The game prediction. In the first game, I'll let Aaron take it away. It's KC versus Detroit. The opener. And Detroit is definitely coming out on top week one. We're about to stun the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, Easy money. How many points do you put on it? If y'all I mean, win, top, are going to be great. I mean, top three O line with their best defensive player out. I mean, we got a great offense built. And I mean, Kelsey, their one and only weapon is gone besides Mahomes. So. <laughs> The odds went from a little bit to a lot of it real quick. Yeah, there's a small chance he still I, plays, but I doubt he's going to. I mean, I was taking an L. That's what I was actually going to go with, but I was like, there's no way. I just <laughs> don't see it. Even with Jamal out, we just were too powerful now. <laughs> Last year, we were top five ending the year, and all we did was add weapons. Well, Laporta's going to easily probably take rookie of the year this year. I know that's another prediction, but I mean, the Lions <laughs> are exciting. The Lions are exciting. This is the most exciting Lions have been ever, probably. <laughs> yeah, the, the atmosphere has <laughs> never been like that for like, the Lions. So. This game is going to be fun. I think this game is going to be a shootout, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I wish Kelsey was in it, but I mean. He still I might. I want to win. So. <laughs> he still yeah, might it's play. be the but, Kelsey who can torch us. But it would be on limited snap. Yeah. But maybe somebody will step up and we'll finally have a real receiver in that room. I mean, they have a couple. They have names. Could. It's just that they're going to, exactly. But so how, ma- how much confidence do you put on it? Um, I have about a 10. A 10 on Detroit? Yep. I am... Damn. Yep. Uh, let me grab Caleb. Caleb. What? What? Uh, Caleb put two on the line as well. Mm. Uh, what did Asian put on this game? If you... Asian put two on the Lions. Uh, so they both put two on it? Okay. Would you yeah. like me to go first, Smooth, between me and you? Nah, you, uh, I'll go first. I'll, I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Um, I put nine on Kansas City. I... I'm playing it safe, you know. I feel like going with the Lions is a little bit more risky, in my opinion. But I don't think it matters. Is that really at receiver? Mahomes is just that good of a quarterback. He's gonna he's gonna put the ball where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So I got the Chiefs with nine. Um, I agree with that as well, and I'm very much in the camp of I put high points on the Chiefs almost every single time. They've never let me down. So I'm playing 15 on the Chiefs. Not a slight to the lines at all. This is a scary game, but if I'm going to put high points on a team, I'm going to put on a team with Pat Mahomes at quarterback. <laughs> Can't argue that. And, uh, Before we move on, this is also my shootout game of the week. Yeah, Lions in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, that's, I feel like it's going to be everyone. <laughs> that. Yeah. It should be a fun game. I can't wait to watch that game. Is it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, tomorrow I have the day off, and uh, when that game comes on, it's just me and that game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me, that game, yes, some nice, me and that some game. nice music, mood music. Mm. <laughs> I not be at work in a hundred and six degree weather. Mm, sounds, yeah, fun. sounds fun. 
Yay. Well, moving on, we have Caleb's division, Atlanta versus the Panthers. They're at Atlanta. Um, I put five, five on the Falcons. I'm a believer that the Falcons could take that division. I know Caleb thinks they're the worst team, arguably, in the NFL right now. I know his strong well, opinion on this. Um, yeah, no, he doesn't say they are, but he says that he's, like, down there. <laughs> yes. But I think Ritter is going to be fine. I don't I don't really think Ritter is going to be crazy good, but I think he's going to be a solid quarterback in the NFL. I think b -John, you got b -John, you got Algier, you got Coriel Patterson, you still have Pitts, who one day maybe will be what we want him to be. <laughs> they went out and got Matt Collins, who beefed up during the offseason, if, you know, if you've seen his transformation. And, yep. yeah, I like I like the roster yeah, that's around Drake. them. They have Drake London, yeah, as I was say that. Yep. Uh, they got Drake London. I like that offense. Now, the O-line is scary, probably, but with that many weapons, I think they can make things happen in a division that isn't very, very strong. So, I took the Falcons with five. This should also be a fun game because you see two young offenses going at it here. Um, I'm just gonna make it. Uh, I'm just gonna steal what Coon said. And, you know, I'm a big Falcon believer this year. I think they're winning division. Actually, I actually got a bet with this uh, division. That the Falcons do better than Tampa Bay. Well, I haven't really given up my side of the bed yet, but if the Buccaneers do better than the Falcons, my brother can say the word Yomo to me again. So it's a big bet. <laughs> Huge bet. I, I told him I basically mistake. wanted him to put some respect on the Falcons. So okay. that that's what the bet's going to go around. I put eight on this game. That's just kind of where the points fell with the other picks I have. I have a little bit of uh, some surprise picks, I feel. I'm with um, you guys on that. So you picked, you picked the Falcons, Aaron? I did pick the Falcons. How many points did you put They're on low key. Um, I put six. Just because I did watch um, preseason Carolina and they didn't look god awful. Yeah. So Bryce couldn't move with the ball. Bryce does make his reads and he does stay pretty calm in that pocket and he can take off. So, I mean, they're, like you said, they're both young, but I think Atlanta with Bijan having Cordell there to give them younger backs that experience having Drake London at 6'3, 6'4, or whatever. I mean, they just kind of got a really young team and just need to find themselves and they'll be all right mm -hmm. because they're not in the greatest division either. Mm -hmm. Like that offense the divisions up for grabs is an amazing potential. <laughs> I mean, and don't forget AJ Terrell Jr. He's now came around and he's the top 10 corner in the league. Mm -hmm. So it's not like their defense is a slouch. They yeah. just have pieces they're missing. Yep. Asian is on the Atlanta train, he put nine on the foul. Okay. Caleb is the only one going with the Panthers this week. He put eight on the Panthers. Oh. Ooh. Well, he okay. train a little. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might not be. A I mean, I don't game. hate it. Like, like I said, this game is a toss up, but it's, it's very much. That's that's why I only put five on. I was like, I don't want to go anywhere in the higher up points on this game. That's why I put six. But, uh, five points just felt eight. Originally it was twelve, but I was like, nah, nah, <laughs> that can't be. <laughs> no. Moving on to a game, I feel great putting high points on. Bengals versus the Browns at Brown Brownie Land here. Um, I'll start off and say I put thirteen on the Bengals. The Browns are shit, have been shit, and probably still will be shit. I will say that until I'm proven wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, and the Bengals didn't. Nothing changed like negatively on their team. They only are. They only remain the same. No, their O line's still garbage. Like the Bengals just remain the same everywhere around. Like they just they're fine. The Browns lost Cream yeah. Hunt. They people are really banking on Deshaun Watson year two comeback, which I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. And I don't know. Hey, I just, hopefully, pops up. 
the Browns don't they just don't ever do anything. <laughs> they choke. They, I wish I could say they even choke. They just don't even win enough games to choke. Anymore. They're wasting Nick Chubb's career, man. That is a very true statement, unfortunately. And that man said he's going to run as hard as he can this year. And I want it. Um, I hate to see these backs and what's happening to them right now. Yeah, the running back market is crazy right now. Yeah, it's sad. Um, being honest. Caleb also took the Bengals with 11 points. Uh oh. I think I'm riding the train alone. I'll go ahead and go next. Oh, God. I took the. Five. Um, I looked up the recent history of the Browns and Bengals, and, and in the last five years, the Browns are actually eight and two against the Bengals. I think the Bengals are gonna need a few games to get it situated like they did last year, but that's just kind of what I think. I think after the first few weeks, they'll be the scary Bengal team that we're uh, <laughs> used to seeing, and I think the Browns are gonna still win in Week One. So I got five on the Browns. So oh, I have seven. Oh, go ahead, do Asian. Asian had eight on Cincinnati. This motherfucker really pull out the stat line card all and week one. I did. I did. <laughs> He's doing his doing his homework. Hey, I got to get ahead somehow. Yes, sir. Okay, so I took... My bad, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, or, or fall behind, and that was it. Yeah. Okay, so I took Bengals, but I only put seven. So, I mean, if you stack it up on paper, Bengals are better. They got three great receivers. Two top 10, 15 receivers in the league. And, I mean, I think Cleveland could come out and punch them in the mouth and keep them down if Cleveland's going to be the team everyone's saying they're going to be. Because, I mean, if we look, their run game has been pretty decent over the years. So, and if Watson can maybe now fully, since he's been there a year and a half, can do something this year. But if not, the Browns are just going to be the same Browns. But I'm definitely taking the Bengals to this one. But I do understand where you come from with the Browns. Mm -hmm. They just seem to play the Bengals better. I mean, if you recall KC last week one last year, a lot of big teams will lose their, their opening, opening one. Right. I mean, you're a Dallas fan, so I mean, you of all people know <laughs> that's not a shot, but I'm just saying at times you guys can go 0 and 4 and come out in the playoffs. It's just what big teams do at times. So, this is what happens in the NFL, man. Yes, sir. Crazy. Oh man, this is a this is a fun one. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Indianapolis Colts. Um, uh, I'll just say I put fourteen on the Jaguars. Um, I don't know, they kind of proved what they were last year, and the Colts are still unknown. So, and also JT Jacksonville missing. only upgrade their wide receiver room. With Calvin Ridley. They brought back Evan Ingram. Their running backs are healthy. Trevor Lawrence looks like he looked last season, which is pretty which is pretty damn good. He proved to be kind of the real deal there. And uh yeah, yeah. adults are going through a lot of bullshit drama. Jonathan Taylor's fucking Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't even know Jonathan Taylor, that's it. That's all I gotta say about him because I don't know if he's injured or if they're just being cucks or what's going on. <laughs> but, uh... They just don't want to pay the man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, oh. and he don't want to play and risk an injury to put him out. And then he has no contract. So, I mean, it's... It's just like... It's a, on Bell, so. it's a mess over here. But, I put 14 on the Jaguars. I don't really think the Colts are in a uh, winning mindset at the moment. <laughs> I mean, Anthony uh, Richardson, that's who they have, right? He forgot who went where. I think it was Richardson. Yeah, he's still the yeah, he, he, Florida. Yeah, sure. he, he looks fun. He looks like a fun quarterback. Um, so, so He'll probably bring some life in that uh, offense. I'm going to say I put 11 confidence in the Jags. So, I mean, they showed us last year what they were. 
you said they added weapons, which they did. And so, I mean, they touched the playoffs. Colts ain't been anywhere near a franchise quarterback in the last four or five years. But with them drafting Anthony Richardson, I think they found something, but they need to put a team around him before they're going to start winning games. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm done. I put 15 on the Jags. I just don't really like the Colts in their situation, and I seem to think Jacksonville is a whole lot of a better team. So 15 on the Jags. I will say I wouldn't be surprised if the Colts are one of those teams that starts to win games at the end of the year. The Lions, like, like, the yeah, teams that might pull off like the Lions did last year. Once they get in a nice groove, mm-hmm. that they might just go on a streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say kind of like the Lions did last year. Where they're not really in playoff playoff contention. Like they have a chance to make it, but they're showing that they're at least going in the right direction. Yeah, they're not gonna be that three four t- win team. So. But um, Caleb took the Jaguars with 15 as well. I think we're all going to sweep on the Jaguars. Yeah, and eight, the Jags with 14. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, the next game. Oh, yeah, this is fun. This uh, <laughs> since uh, Vikings are my division, I'll take this. I all mean, right, yeah, Vikings, and I got confidence of four. So, I mean, Vikings can either be a top five team in the NFC or they can be a bottom five. So, but Tampa literally doesn't have anything but Baker. And, I mean, like I said, they don't have anything. So, have yeah, you just uh, doesn't have anything. You didn't have to say Baker. Yeah. Well, I, I want to put, put on record that Mike Evans might become a Lion. So, I really hope not. I really hope he uh, goes somewhere where he's uh, number two or one. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to be. Because. Uh, St. Brown is way better than Mike. Yeah, Evans. yeah, that's why I said I hope not. So, I mean, because I have him in fantasy football. Because... It would not be good for me. <laughs> yeah, Mon Ross, like, we will get to that. Go ahead. Hey, Mike Evans is, is, is a stud. He's had 1,000 yards every season. Every season. Yeah, as a number one. I think he becomes a number two behind someone. I don't know what that's going to do to him. But he also has Baker Mayfield thrown to him, and Baker's had really good receivers to throw to, and it's never done anything, so that scares me. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and start us off. I'll put 11 on the – or not start us off, but you know what I mean, like go next. i put 11 on the Vikings. Uh, my only reason is uh, Baker Mayfield, so it, it is 100% – a hate relationship with with Baker. I have that Can't as well. Me. I I've a town Minnesota. I mean, you're telling me that Baker Mayfield's gonna keep up it with the offense that has Justin Jefferson? Yeah. Okay. You, you don't <laughs> you don't have one corner that can cover Justin, and don't forget they drafted they that drafted that Addison. rookie. They have Addison they have Osborne still. They have T J Hawkinson. They don't have enough. They just don't have enough oh. to cover all that. And I don't no. think... I re- I don't like Baker at all. I'm very much in the same camp. I, I've been burnt by Baker before. And uh, I don't think he's a good quarterback at all. So I put 10 on the Vikings. And... Uh, Caleb joined, I believe. Ah, perfect timing, Caleb. You're just talking about your boy. Do I, do I sound okay? You sound fine yes. for a phone. <laughs> Um, and then what's what's up, Mr. McFist Pump, sexy bastard? What's up, my brother Ty. <laughs> oh, on the on the road again, baby. Um, yeah, baby. Mook told me y'all were talking about Baker Mayfield. Gross. Anyway, yeah, I put ten on the Vikings. I mean, the Buccaneers look like dog shit. Uh, what what did uh? Then they lose I know their I picked, I know I picked. You no, I picked him, but how many did I put? I can tell you, you put one on it. Oh, yeah, dude. I got one on the Vikings. Pluto tells me that his Vikings are taking a step back. I happen to believe him. You mean and, one you on know, the Bucks? I, yeah, one on the Bucks. One point for one Baker touchdown. Man, that's the only one he's going to throw all year. Too much <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Asian put 15 on Minnesota. 
Well put. Well put. Look, it it might be the Justin Jefferson show. I mean, I can only hope. Don't forget T.J. Hawkinson too. <laughs> I mean, I'm not worried about Hawkinson. I mean, not many tight ends can say they put 40 points in one week. Or 40 Isn't points in one week. Isn't he dealing with some minor, minor injury? I don't think so. No. Okay. I just heard he wasn't playing in preseason, so I thought maybe. Play no, they're just being cautious. Oh, perfect timing, actually, because we can move on to Caleb's favorite team. And the Tennessee Titans game. versus the New Orleans Saints. Well, as you've seen, I put three on the Titans. <laughs> Boy, it's that sad day in life when you have to go get three on team. I mean, dude, it's just... Dennis Allen's not a winner. I don't know what to tell y'all. People are already gassing up the Saints again, and I'm like... I don't know why, man, like... Uh, I mean, I feel like Olave is going to have a breakout year. I mean, but the team has four tight ends. They don't know who their who their tight end is. <laughs> like, they have... I, I think Derek Carr is an upgrade, but Dennis Allen will find a way to blow any leads. And, you know, this is just a coach and mismatch. Rabel knows what he's doing, and Dennis Allen has not a fucking clue. Um, yeah. I put four on the Titans. I also don't like the Saints very much. I don't think Derek Carr is that much of an upgrade, even if he is an upgrade from Jameis Winston. Um, they have Alvin Kamara out right now. I know they have Williams to replace him for the time being, but still, that is a downgrade in my opinion. Um, their tight end room is almost every single tight end you could look at on free agency. Um... <laughs> While the Titans added DeAndre Hopkins, they still have Derrick Henry. The Hannah Hill's going out again this year. Maybe he'll actually be able to throw the ball having two wide receivers that are good with Burks and so it's just not the playoffs. Yeah, except for playoffs. They don't do that. But, um, yeah, and if he doesn't work out, they still have uh, young guys that they might start. But I think the Titans are going to be heavily slept on for this week one matchup because they only upgraded. They only upgraded the second receiver because I'm pretty sure Burks is out. Traylon and D-Hop. And they also have uh, that one guy. Sure is out. Well, they also have that one guy from I can't. Phillips? Kyle Phillips or whatever? He's pretty good. I like him. They do They do have that tight end that started to pop at the end of the last Yeah, year. they also have a tight end who I will not try to pronounce his goddamn name for the life of me. Uh, yeah, he's a boogeyman. But, yeah. yeah. He's yeah, he's starting to come around big fast time. D Hop alone should be enough to fucking yeah. demand respect in that passing game. I mean, we'll put Laddie Daddy on D Hop and then everything else is just left open. <laughs> you can't put a boy on a grown ass man like that. <laughs> you Alice, can try. I love Laddie Daddy. I love Laddie Daddy. But how many receivers can we say right now in the NFL that's gone a season? A complete season with a shit quarterback, a bottom two, and not drop a single pass. We can't. Not even Megatron. D Hop's just a grown ass man out there. I mean, that man, it don't matter. He's used to dogs throwing to him. So he's not used to the Brady's throwing to him or the Rodgers. He knows shit quarterbacks well. And that's why he's so scary. So, my opinion. Hmm. I think people are underestimating the D-Hop move from Tennessee, but I'm not saying yeah, they're going to be no. winning in the playoffs, but they're definitely going to be winning I mean, games. You know, like... Oh, did y'all already talk about the team that's winning that division? The Falcons? No, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm in the Titan Falcons. division. Oh, the Jaguars? Yeah. Yeah, the Prince. Yep, we all put high confidence on it. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure they play somebody booty cheeks. I'm pretty sure I also put high confidence. The Colts. Oh yeah, that was like my 15. Uh, who? Well, did, so who did you take, Aaron? With how many points? I I picked Titans three. And so, you, I mean, Mookie? You guys did pick up Jamal Williams, but he ain't shit. So. Oh, well, I think Williams will be fine. I just 
I just don't like them. Dennis Allen will find a way to blow that game, even in New Orleans. Yeah, move. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I put four on the trees as well. Oh, and uh, Asian. Hang on, let me pull it back up. I think he went with Asian the Saints. The Saints. Put like he did. S- seven. I was going to, but with Kamara out, it's rough. I just can't, bro, because I don't know what the Saints are going to look like. I know what the Titans are going to look like. A better version of the Titans. <laughs> yeah, they're so similar. That's why I'm telling you, this is, this is the coaching, like, maybe the biggest coaching mismatch in week one. Not to mention that, also, like, I'm going to tell you, Dennis Allen's about to outcoach somebody who just upgraded his offense. That's crazy. Yeah, you can tell me. Dude, people gas up the Saints, and I'm like, Dennis Allen's 15 and 38, man. Like, you you cannot tell me that that's good. Mm-hmm. Not at all. It's, um, just, it's indefensible. And then we, we trade away the, the greatest coach in our history for a first-round pick, and I'm like, okay, but we're still left with, with dog water. Yep. That's how it goes. Um, moving on though, we have the Niners versus the Steelers at Pittsburgh. I think that's Asian. your division, right? That is my division oh, and the Asian. That's right. Okay, so it's a piece of time. We'll just let Asian pick Asian. first. <laughs> Put one on Pittsburgh. I respect it. They can come away with a win here easily. Well, apparently they're supposed to be pretty good. Or, well, decent. I hear Pickett killed it in the preseason. I mean, it's preseason. Um, I hear that, well, obviously, you know, every team, if they get their shit together, then they'll be pretty good. But I- I've heard at least pretty good talks about the Steelers. Mm. Well, what, who did you guys take? Um, I took the Niners just because, I mean, for one, that damn defense. <laughs> and two, they got a steam act. And we all know what he did in Carolina. We've seen what he did on a really good team last year. And it's just going to get better. So the chemistry, Kittle's kind of shaken up. But, I mean, Pittsburgh ain't showed me anything to go against the Niners, who's a top three, top four team possibly in the NFC. So. How many points do you put on it? Uh, 12. Yeah, I put 10 on the Niners. Um, yeah, make- I, I just, I don't know. I got like a slither of doubt, but not enough to really. I don't know what Pittsburgh's offense is going to be. I have a good idea of what the Niners' defense is going to be. and got no reason to go against Brock Purdy yet. Um... The Shanahan offense has shown that it can shine through enough that I feel like Pittsburgh may be a good team this year, but I feel like even if it's going to take a month or so for them to get together, whereas I have a good idea of what San Fran's going to be. Yep. I agree. Well, I'll just keep it short and simple. You guys are making me feel good. At first, I saw Asians pick that he went with the Steelers, and I was like, you know what? Steelers could win. But I put... 10 on the Niners. Uh, That's it. I'll just keep it short and sweet. Yeah, I mean, the Steelers could win, and I feel like this is the type of game the Steelers would win, but I still put 8 on the Niners. If I could go lower on this game, I would swap the team to the Steelers, but the fact that I have to put 8 here, I'm playing on the Niners. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's also hard to go against Brock, because why? Why would you go against him when he came in? being a last pick of last year's draft and carried a very high-powered offense and kept them in the running yeah. when most teams probably would have took a lot of losses there. So, That led them to one game out of the Super Bowl. Exactly, and that's impressive. And, yeah, the Lions did take a corner from each of these teams, but Nick Bosa, T.J. Watt, you have two of the best pass rushers right there. And I gotta put Brock over Pickett, but then Steelers got Pickens. I think it's so, too early to say for that. 
Yeah, I think it's purely if they oh put one over the other yet. Yeah. Alright, and I think uh you got an extra right? Oh god. But before we move on, can I make can I say a note about one game you already did? Yeah. I put eleven on the Bengals, but I will be switching that if Joe Burrow don't play. Oh yeah, I think well, if yeah. So far I'm the, the only one to the... play, I will be I will be switching it and I will put some amount of points on the brownies. Um, yep. Well, I'm that means I won't be riding that train alone. Huh? So that means I won't be riding that train alone if you do. All right. right. Stan, if Burrow plays, those high amount of points are staying on the Bengals. Even though the Browns have had their numbers for the last few years, uh, it'll gladly stay on the Burrows if he plays. All right. See, and I, now you can, I, you can talk uh, about Mr. Tune now. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> um, yeah, Arizona at Washington, going to Washington. Um, I'm just gonna try to keep this short because I've already done my rants and talked about how much I hate my life about being a fan of the Cardinals. I put eleven on the car, uh, and on the Cardinals, not on the Cardinals, on the on the Washington Commanders. Um. Arizona doesn't even know they want to do a quarterback. They said we were going to start our rookie quarterback. Then the next week, we or two, three days later, we turn around and start starting Dobbs. We traded away a lot of our pieces for scraps of food. We don't have any stability in this organization at all. It is probably the worst organization in NFL history. And this is going to be a losing season. It's just going to be a losing season. We're probably going to do something stupid like move off of Murray, take an insane cap hit just to draft Caleb Williams, who probably will get injured because we don't have an O-line to put him behind. It's just going to be awful. It's awful. Caleb Williams isn't going to the draft. There is no light at the end of the tunnel right now as a Cardinals fan, so I put 11 on the Commanders, and they're probably going to stop a mud hole with us because they have a light at the end of the tunnel, and his name is Sam Howell. <laughs> <laughs> you cross yep. your fingers. You make sure you just pray that Kyler Murray comes back at least five. I put twelve on the Manders. Um, yeah, I think Sam Howell might be the guy. He came off of that impressive beating week seventeen of the last of last year. He looked good in preseason. I have no doubts that I don't know if the Manders look like a playoff team, but. But they're going to be a competent football team. The receivers there are good. I don't really love any of their backs, but they've got some decent backs. You know, it's just that team looks like it's a complete team, and the defense should be pretty good. I feel like the Manders are going to win a couple of surprising games, but this isn't a surprising game. You're playing a, a rookie quarterback drafted in the late rounds of the draft. And just... I got twelve on the Manders starting off on a hot on a hot note against the Cardinals. There's also the defense I have in both of my leagues because they were playing the Cardinals week one. Right, well, with that being, go ahead, do you want to go next? Oh, okay. Um, I'll just keep this short and simple. I think Arizona is a dumpster fire. I'd be more shocked if Arizona did win. I got fourteen on the Manders. Go ahead and read the Asians. Asian got 10 on the Manders. All right, well, I put nine because Arizona is not going to win a game this year. I don't think they get win this. No, they're going to tank. They might squeak out one. I, 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 I definitely there, don't think they go win this. play when he comes back. I think, I think Kyler will win a couple games for him. I, even well, without Kyler, Kyler, I just Kyler. don't think we're a team that goes win this. Now, if they go, if they go two and all year, I can see them going zero and sixteen. Well, we're going Dobbs to start the year, so who knows what the fuck we're doing anymore? I mean, you don't have anyone but Hollywood, and he's been getting in trouble. So we got the rookie we drafted. I like him, but there's not enough fucking volume to figure out what he is. So oh yeah, you guys gave up all your big uh, assets for nothing, so now you have no leg to stand on, and. 
when you make your payers, players pay for stuff. So, I mean, it's just bad in Arizona right now. Yeah, it's been bad in Arizona for a hot minute. Not good, um, brother. Not a good, brother. I think people have kind of started to realize just how bad the franchise is as a whole within the last two years as more information has come out. All right, wouldn't that be uh, Kai for the next? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I can keep this one short and sweet. Oh, I yeah. went all in on the Ravens, all all 16 points. Um, Lamar got paid. Everything's golden in Baltimore to start the season. I think the Texans are going to be fun. They shouldn't win this game, though. It's in Baltimore. Lamar under that new contract. OBJ, the weapons, the shine. I think the Ravens get a pretty handy victory here, and maybe we'll see something cool from Shroud, but I have no no doubt on the Ravens as I shoved all my chips in on, on them. Even starting week one? Who? Who? Uh, yes, CJ Stroud is starting. There's no chance he's not he starting. franchise quarterback. They took him very high, so I took up a 15 on Baltimore. I mean, yeah, you said a lot of stuff. I mean, they drafted Zay Flowers, who is going to be very hard to handle in this league with his speed, his acceleration, the way he can run them routes, and then have an OBJ. I mean, you got to give him attention. I mean, he went to hook up at Stafford, and, well, they got a Super Bowl. So, I mean, that could be scary with, what, Dobbins in the backfield as well. The Ravens are going to be a team to be reckoned with this year. I think Houston will be fun. I just don't think. I think Baltimore will be the kind of the cream of the crop in the AFC. Yeah, I mean, under the Bengals and KC, I mean, the Ravens might just sneak up there this year. I've been known to not believe in the Ravens. A lot. On, no, let, me, uh, let, me be, really? let me tell you, Coon, I know you normally don't. I will say, if Lamar gets hurt, then my faith in Baltimore starts to dip. I've been known to not believe in the Ravens a lot. And most of the time, I feel like it's benefited me when I go against them. I don't have exact stat because I'm not going to go back and check all of that, but I think this is easily a game that Baltimore can lose because it's one they're not supposed to. And those always seem to be the games that Baltimore does lose. I like, I like that the Texans seem to have a revitalized offense entirely. I mean, I don't know what the receiving core is going to be yet, but it's young and exciting. It's kind of the same thing as the Ravens, in my opinion, because the Ravens, they have Odell. That's the only real name name there. They have Bateman, too, I guess. But even then, Lamar hasn't really facilitated a receiving core crazily well outside of Mark Andrews. And Did you just say Bateman had a name? Yeah, he has the name value. Like people are gonna recognize the name Bateman. I throw it out before before he got hurt. The Ravens were averaging like thirty something points last year. So I'm not saying I'm not saying he like I'm not saying they're, that they're bad. I'm just saying I don't think the receiver additions are gonna help as much because I think where Lamar shines is still his run game. I mean, he can still throw the ball. Obviously, I'm not saying he can't, but I'm saying at the core, I don't think the receiving core is going to benefit them as much as people think. Because it's still just going to be Mark Andrews as the number one, and then Lamar Jackson running the football. The running backs need to stay healthy for more than four weeks this time, uh, because it's been two years when they've been injured in the backfield all the way through. I so I want to see them come out, prove that they win, prove that they can stay healthy, and I also think that taking a shot on a young up and coming team with Pierce, uh, all rookie wide receivers. Um, they she got the fucking Dallas tight end. Very nice, but edge rusher as well. Like I just want, like, I think that week one crazy shit happens, and I, I'm fine throwing a shot on the Texans with one point for crazy shit happens. Ah <laughs> uh, man, hey, you got to get it wins up somewhere. <laughs> um. Asian put 16 on the Ravens. Yeah, that's a and... smart pick. I mean. And as for me, I put 13 on the Ravens. 
I think the Texans have improved, but I don't see them beating the Ravens week one. I'll say y'all pretty much already said everything that needed to be said. Yeah, I mean, it's the smart money to go with the Ravens. I just think this is very much a game, especially given that it's week one that the Texans can win. Yep. I feel like you come up with a surprise win. Mm-hmm, and then that will kick the Ravens into gear. But moving on, we have Aaron's division, the Packers, yeah. without Aaron Rodgers for the first year against the Bears. Jordan Love is looking nice. He is hooking up with those receivers and building chemistry very fast. He's stepped in before. He's done some stuff. He... But the Bears also really stacked that team this year a little bit. They really gave Justin someone to throw to. And, well, Justin already showed you that he can run like Lamar and he can throw a little better. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time before the kid breaks out and has a really good year. And I think it's going to be this year with those three receivers. So, But I put one. Because, I mean, it could go with Jordan Love. Like I said, he's had that chemistry. He's got Christian Watson and then the rookie they drafted this year. So, and he's been hooking up with them very nicely. So, I don't know which one I've been going back and forth between the two. <laughs> well, yeah, <I> pick one. <laughs> yeah, I have a very unconfident seven points on the Bears. I don't know what either of these teams are. That seven points is just on Justin Fields to give me a show. <laughs> so, I mean, that's... I mean, like I said, the Jordan Love experiment is an interesting one. I think the Packers will know by Thanksgiving if he's the guy or not. Um, well, I mean, you'll also know if he's the guy if he actually learned from number 12. Because we all know what number 12 is. He is a is very good quarterback. For, what three seasons now? This is his right. team now. I feel like by Thanksgiving they'll have enough of a sample size where we're eight games in the season that Green Bay will either say, "Okay, this is the guy. We're going all in," or "Hey, we're pivoting off and we're getting a new guy next year." I feel like they'll yep. know by then. But right now, I don't know because, like I said, I, I like what the Bears are doing. I don't know if it pans out this year. I kind of think it does. So. I got seven on the Bears, thinking they're going to have more than a four-win season, which is what they had last year. So, like, they're trending in the right direction, and I'll take the trending in the right direction over the complete unknown. So, I got seven not confident points on the Bears. I got six points on Bear Down, baby. I feel so good to say again. Oh, my God. Mookie, say it with me. Bear Down! (laughs) Uh... I can't say that this week. How dare you? <laughs> he's a with you wow, he's a trailer. That's crazy. I mean, the Bears, they went out and got DJ Moore. They honestly might have one of the best receiving rooms in the league, low-key. With oh, Mooney. I mean, Potential-wise. They, they, Mo- they have Mooney, the Steeler boy, Claypool. And then, Claypool. And then they have DJ Moore. And then they also have Burton at tight end, who is also... Low key, he was kind of popping last year at the end of it. You need to watch out for his name. Um, Khalil Herbert's going to be a full time starter this year. I'm excited to see that. No they brought in my other boy, Deonta Foreman, who yep. can help supplement carries if need be. That offense looks fun. That offense looks real fun. I'm excited it to see what they do. Scary. And I think that offense is going to click faster than the Packers. So that's why that's kind of why I'm pretty confident this week. See, me and you were talking about this, Coon. Well, what if this Packers offense works, and then like a receiver like a Romeo Dobbs becomes very fantasy relevant? You know, that's why I drafted him, man. That's, that's why I drafted him. Yeah, that, that's always I have him in my money league, and that's that's always a possibility. Is that it's like what if Jordan Love doesn't suck? Then you're gonna be very happy you invested in some Packers stock somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that Jordan Love sucks. It's just that, you know, the man's got some big old shoes to fill. I'm just saying, what if he turns out to be really good? That is, like, on the board. Oh, and I'm thinking that I honestly think that the kid's going to be good. 
Like you don't sit behind one of the greater quarterbacks that's ever played and not learn some stuff. I mean, look at what Zach Wilson kind of showed in the preseason. No, don't bring Brown Zach Wilson up a as a as a example. Right. <laughs> Bring up Jimmy G yeah, and Brissett, who both went on to go start I'm, for teams. Well, I mean, yeah, and then they got hurt and got swept right on out of that team. So that's not yeah, but they st- they've they've started from multiple teams each and went to playoffs yeah. each. But <laughs> like, I think love. At least they have love. like accommodations on their career. <laughs> well, I'm just showing like improvement wise. I wasn't saying how great their career or whatever, but just improvement from last year who Zach was and then what he showed in the preseason with second strings. I mean it Rogers can mentor you. He can help you if you're willing to. And if Jordan was willing to learn, then he'll be good. If not, he'll show he's a plus like a lot of the other quarterbacks. There's also a question if Rogers is even like willing to teach him though, because there's always that fucking stigma around the two of them that they didn't get along. But who knows? Well, I mean, look what happened with Brett Favre and Rogers. Brett Favre got scooted out, and Rogers got handed the throne to a really good Green Bay team. And now, I mean, the Green Bay is as good as when Rogers got handed the team, but still not the worst team in the league. So, I mean, who knows if he helped? He could be a Tannehill. I right, move. What the fuck do you put on uh, the Bears, you bitch? Or on the Packers, you bitch? I put three on the Packers. I'm just banking, like a gut feeling that Jordan Love is going to be that guy. And plus, they also got Aaron. Jones. I uh, I think Aaron Jones could. Oh no, I don't want to make that statement. But I got three on the Packers. I'm just going with the gut feeling this week. And. Asian has six on the Bears. Hey, me too. Oh, God, next Great week. <laughs> All I gotta say for this next week, Broncos oh, so country, crazy. let's ride. Yeah, I'm so afraid to be yeah. like me too. Oh, uh, yeah, you can go first if you want. I, get, I got nine points on Sean Payton. Damn. I mean, the, I feel like the man's gonna come in. I just, I don't think the Raiders are trending upward. I exactly look at Jimmy G as an upgrade over Derek Carr. Ooh, that and, hurts. you know, the uh, Jimmy G can't even stay healthy. Is he even going to be out there by week five? Yeah, I think like, uh, quarter three, he might be on the bench for the rest of the game. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, Josh Jacobs is a bright spot on this team, but that Denver defense is nasty. Uh, I feel like, you know, Russ can't be any worse under Sean Payton. Um, I feel like they're going to have a game plan. And I feel like Sean Payton just was about to out, about to coach circles around McDaniels. And, you know, so I got nine points on. I, I know I think Denver's going to be an up and down team. But I feel like this might be a game where Payton's going to have that team ready to play. And Sean Payton is going to get his first dub. In the high altitude in Denver, it's a home game. Oh, Opening baby. season, I think. Yeah, I, I just, I just think there's so much momentum that's going to be swinging in Denver's favor that I got nine points on the page. Start turning this ship around, and we'll see where it goes from there. I got twelve points on Broncos country. That's right. Okay. Um, the Raiders are. I still stand by the fact that the Raiders are probably. If the Cardinals didn't exist, the worst team in the NFL right now. Their team is already in smoke and flames with Jimmy G. We don't know if he can stay healthy. The players are getting locked out of the training room, or the training facilities, and complaining and still not being allowed back in. Chandler Jones has voiced this, and Devontae Adams has voiced his dislike, his, um, his, uh, displeasure with everything that's been going on in the organization. I think that team is set to implode. And the only person that's happy on that roster is the one who got paid, Josh Jacobs. Yeah. I had two on the Broncos. Um, I think it could go either way. The only reason I picked Denver is my boy Sean. So that's it. I mean, he came in and he kind of just let Denver know how it's going to be. And I don't really know how they responded. I don't know how well Russ will listen without his people around or whatever that it was that he did. But 
and you guys are spot on with Jimmy. I mean, he's going to be hurt. Um, Devontae went to Oakland because of Derek, and then they shipped him off the next year. So, I mean, I'm sure that's a bad taste in Adam's mouth. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he should have stuck around Green Bay. Things weren't so bad there, huh? Yeah, no, they really weren't. Also, they lost yeah, Darren Waller, too. Know. They don't have their number one tight end anymore. They lost Mac no. Hollins. They only lost. They yep. only lost. This offseason. They only lost. That's it. I think Jimmy is a downgrade from Derek. I really think Derek was a re- decent quarterback, and the re- way he got benched last year was just not right. So they need to wipe out the high ups in that organization and clear out and get some football people in there. People can actually help that city out with some football. But yeah. Mookie? 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 <laughs> this motherfucker. We've lost him. We lost He's him. He's dead, boys. <laughs> I forgot what Asian picked you up with. I'm sure Asian probably went with, uh, Broncos, but I mean, he might have went low with Raiders. I guess in my confidence, the Packers, Bears, Raiders, Broncos are my two lowest. Because some are just some toss ups, honestly. He's put nine I on the like Broncos. Or anything? I don't know. Is he still on the call? Yeah, he's still on the call. I say it looked like he was. He might just be losing service. He's a Cowboys uh, I fan. I don't know what happened. It like kicked me out, but. <laughs> It was ass. This is why I complained about Discord being yeah. ass. Go ahead. Tell us how many points you put on the Raiders. You know, I already did this whole rant, but I'll do it again. I don't feel good about it, but I put one on the Raiders. There's I no shot. Know. There is no shot you're putting points on the Raiders. <laughs> there is no shot you're putting points on the Raiders. This is the one dog against everyone. points on the Raiders. I, I called him picking the fucking Raiders. The more y'all talked, the more I wanted to switch. But <laughs> man, he just wants to put the finger up to all of us. I will ride this train alone. You're damn yeah, right. You're gonna ride that train alone. Ain't no one get boring that one. <laughs> He's putting his yeah. one up in the air because he acknowledges Jimmy G. I feel like the Raiders should lose, but we'll come down with the win. Like, this is somehow the Broncos' trap game for week one. Yeah, let me tell you, fucking Mike McDaniel versus Sean Payton sounds real appealing. Well, I was Raider, uh, the Broncos, but their receiving core kind of got hurt. Maybe. And... I mean, well, Judy's you... starting week one, and that's the Bad one you gotta worry about. Can, can, can you tell me the Raiders receiving core think, outside of Devontae Adams? I think missed week one. I think it might be Sutton and Mims. Yeah, which oh, isn't is bad. Really missing? Oh, I thought he was actually gonna I play. don't know for sure if he's missing, but Judy is dealing with an injury. Yeah, they're both dealing with injuries, but I think Sutton's gonna make it for week one. Isn't Hunter Renfro like Renfro like the two or is he the three over there? I don't even know what he is yeah. over there anymore. In Oakland, he's he like a three or four. He's, he's, the two the two. he's probably he's probably the two now because all their receivers are gone. Well, yeah, Waller's gone, so he is the two. Well, I mean, I'll, say this. I'll say this: if watch out for Marmon Mims week one, I'm not gonna be shocked if that man. I was hits. just gonna say that. Yeah. Yes. Especially against that Raiders crappy secondary. I picked him up in fantasy. I think I think with Sean Payton you're gonna find something there. So Sean Payton is a great coach and he's got a decently young team, some really good studs, and I think he's going to produce them. So that's just what great coaches do. Look at what he did in New Orleans all them years. I mean Breeze oh, was a bust in the Chargers came oh, over to Spain, and he was throwing 5,000 yards every season, which is unheard of. I mean, Marcus so, Paulson, six-round pick. Yeah, and, I mean, come on now. It's just, and then Mims kind of already has a little bit of a name. 
like that Zay Flowers. So, and you know he's going to do some work in with that. Devontae Williams, that halfback, if he didn't tear his ACL last year, I mean, top 10 back easily. And they got P. He's Ryan behind rock. them. Yeah, and then, I mean, you um, got a solid I'll... second. I also don't think Williams is starting week one. I'm pretty sure it's Peter. I think Williams is still recovering. I was going to say, I think they are going to have him low. I think Williams is starting on like a low snap count. He's yeah, kind of getting yeah, eased back into it. Snap. And, you know, not to mention, I mean, they got massive nuts luts in Denver now. Oh, yes. Big nuts luts, man. Yup. I was very sad to see him go. Man won us a lot of games. Yeah, he did. At least the kicker we got was hitting his kicks in the preseason. Well, this next one is, uh... <laughs> uh... This next one is really simple. This one's Here easy. Uh, I got 14 on the Eagles. I, I, I think Philly's going to have some defense problems because they kind of tore that defense apart. But... <laughs> New England won't be able to take advantage of it. I got That's a full it. Six, 16 on Philly. I mean, I'm sorry, but they won the draft this year, getting Ringo Smith Jr. and uh, the DT. Like, they literally just added – their defensive line is unheard of right now. It's just, you're not going to be able to run on this team. Their backers are so fast. They got Flay, who's still a very good corner, shutting people down. Proved that last year when he got two picks on Jay Jettis and didn't allow him to do a thing, but whatever he wanted. So, I mean, Philly's going to be that team in the NFC this year. So, I'm, they're just smacking the Patriots around. And that's going against Bill. I mean, it's always hard to go against Bill because he's so defensive-minded, but this Philly team is too fucking scary. It's really... On both sides. <laughs> It's really not hard to go against Bill when he sticks to a shitty quarterback and just refuses to quit on him. So I put 60 on the Eagles. No. Mac and Jones is shit. He's mid at best. Like no, Mac Jones is mid at no, best. Garbage. And I don't think they have a chance of hell of winning this game. No, not even part slightly. Of me, part of me feels for Mac because they had a D coordinator running the offense. I think he's average, but I don't think New England has him set up to succeed at all. Also, they also have the same thing that fucking Saints have. They have like a million tight ends that are just wasting their potential away. Remember fucking Hunter Henry? He was a god before he went to New England. Yeah, you're not lying. Well, you know, that's what happens when you get a D coordinator calling the plays. You don't know what he's doing. It's I mean, just like, this offense is going to have New England begging for mercy like we've never seen Also, before. their oh. rookie wide receiver from last season is already on IR. Thornton, Tyquan Thornton. I, I, like, I think, it is a lot bad in New England. I think Philly lost some pieces, and there are going to be some teams that expose mm-hmm. that. New England don't have a good enough offense to expose that, though. <laughs> no, not at all. So, I mean, it's pretty unanimous that that's Philly. I'll just keep it simple and short. 16 on the Eagles. Yes. And How does that taste? 16 on the Eagles. I mean, I, I wish they'd lose. Honestly, I wish they'd go 0-16, but I don't think that's happening. I think quite the opposite is more likely to happen. <laughs> well, it'll literally be more, more literal to happen after... 3.25 p.m. Central Time on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, moving on to the next game. We have Miami at L.A. versus the like Chargers. Game. This game is a scary one. Yeah. It looks oh, like God, I, mean, I have an opinion on this game, and when I, my turn, I'll share it with you. Um, I guess I'll go first. I put three on Miami. I love my boy Herbert. I love my boy Herbert. But I don't think Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are setting him up for the success he could have anymore. I think they're kind of on the decline. Whereas I think Tua has arguably the best receiver in football. Arguably. At least the top. Yeah, in Tyreek Hill. And arguably, 
another top five wide receiver in the NFL, Jalen Waddle. Exactly. I think those two alone are it's already like insane. Game now. And they have Mostert and a rookie that they drafted behind the backfield. So, I think this team is going to be slept on, but it's all dependent on Tua's health, which I think will be fine so long as they don't put him in with a concussion again. So I actually went opposite of you, and I went five on the Chargers just because of that defense. That defense. I think they're going to be able to shake up Tua. They added some dogs in that secondary. They have dogs in safeties. They got yes. Mac attack. I mean, I think they're going to rattle Miami. But, I mean, it's also, I wanted to go Miami because you got Tyreek. And, I mean, Tyreek is amazing. Tyreek and Wall is insane. So, I mean, you can toss it up on a one-on-one and Tyreek goes up over anybody like he's 6'5". So, and then he's fast and blows everyone out of the water when he's running with you know, gear three when he has two other gears to get into. Yeah, I just think, I think they're, they're more explosive. Defense. They are on offense, but that defensively, Miami's not where the Chargers are. So they might be able to get some stops and some touchdowns on the defensive side. It's kind of what I'm shooting on. I went more on the Chargers as well, but, uh, I'm going to be real. I think Kellen Moore is going to work there. I think Dallas was very dumb for letting him go. Very I think, dumb. You know, I think brilliant young offensive coordinator with Justin Herbert. I think he's going to have the, the breakout season this year. I mean, Miami very much could win this game, but it's in. It's at the Chargers home, which could be a Dolphins home game because, you know, their fans do not like that team in L.A., but uh, I just think that what better way for them to start the season than for, you know, than for young offensive coordinator to come in, put up a lot of points on on Miami. I, like I said, yeah, I thought it's going to be either way. I feel like both of these teams are going to be in the mix. They're going to be really good, but. I'm going Chargers and Kellen Moore and Herbert leaving a big impression big one with four points. Um, I don't really have a reason to, you know, pick. I just kind of picked the Chargers this week with six. I'll keep it uh, short and sweet. And Asian put three on the Chargers. Damn, I'm on the Dolphins trail alone. Yeah, I could turn on the dog. I didn't know which way to go with this game. I just, did I just I. went away. That is how I went to. And I just happened to pick the Chargers. Well, moving on. We have the LA Rams versus the Seattle Seahawks at Seattle. Um, I put nine on Seattle. The Rams are probably going to be without Cooper Cup for a long period of time this year. Their team looks rough. I think they trade everything for a Super Bowl. They got it good on them. I don't think they're going to mount to much this year at all. Uh, especially with Cooper Cup missing time. Um, um, I um, honestly couldn't agree more with Kuhn. I put and, 13 on Seattle. I'll go ahead. Uh, it was kind of messed up there, back and forth. My bad. Uh, I put 12 on Seattle. And that's all I want to say. Is um, I, put, I put 13 on Seattle, but not because I necessarily hate I do think the Rams on the line is booty. Um, but Stafford just threw 5,000 yards two seasons ago. Now, I don't think he's going to do anything like that without Cooper Cup. But I think this Seattle team's going to be really good. I don't think Geno's going to regress. They brought him in another weapon. They've shared up the defense. A lot of these players are rookies going into their second year. It's more an endorsement for the Seahawks than an indictment on the Rams. I do think they're paying back for getting that Super Bowl. But I, I think the Rams will beat some teams, but I just think Seattle's going to be really good this year. I think they went from us thinking they were going to be dog water and then Geno come out and had a really good year, and I think they're going to continue to build on that. you got you got maybe the best receiver in the draft. Um, your defense is only going to get better. It's a bunch of young dolls. And, yeah, I just think Seattle's going to be a really good team. And 
And this is in their home, which is up there with Kansas City as one of the hardest places to play in the NFL. So 13 on Seattle. I right, 13 on Seattle as well. My bad. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and Kenneth Walker was looking like a stud too. Oh, he is. Like I said, I just, I just think that Seattle's going to be really good this year more than the Rams are going to be really bad. The Rams could be really bad again, but I would I would gamble that the Rams are probably going to be a 9-8, eight, 8-9 eight, eight, team, whereas I think Seattle have the potential to be a 12-13 a win team. I mean, I put 13 on Seattle. Stafford's going to retire after this year. I mean, he had another surgery. I mean, Tony Romo all over again. His body's done. He, they got their one ring they wanted. So did Donald. He literally said he wanted to retire because there's nothing else for him to do. So, I mean, they don't really if have anything. O-line back, you know? lets him, if that O-line lets him get beat up again this year, then I can see it as well. Yep. You're going to see O Levis, or not Levis, but uh, whatever the fuck they have. Here. I forgot they drafted. The <laughs> but Seattle yeah, just. They have a team. Tariq Rowland is going to be a top five corner. He's six four. He is one of the fastest people in the league, and he had an incredible year last year. They have other dogs on there. Quandre Diggs being one of them. Kenneth Walker is a monster. DJ Metcalf is a freaking freak made in the lab. A locket still a monster, got, also. Yeah, they got that rookie this year who's just going. I mean. If Gino can do what he did last year, Seattle's going to make a run in the playoffs. Not a Super Bowl, but they're going to be scary on offense. The thing is, man, Gino, Gino's just a facilitator. That's all they need him to be. Just get the ball, get your team involved. Yeah, and they definitely, I mean, they still have Noah Fant, right? Yeah, I, think, I believe uh... so. Yeah, so they had, I mean, they had quite a few targets now, so. And Pete Carroll's no push over at USC. He was one of the most dominating college football coaches. He came in with Russell and, you know, he took Seattle to Super Bowl to the playoffs, and he's going to continue to do that. Hmm. So... The next game. The next game. The Moose Boys versus the New York Giants. Well, I'm not going to lie. I went with bias. I chose my Cowboys with seven. Um, I'm glad it's in primetime. Y'all can say what y'all want about Cowboys in primetime, but I see it. Yeah, because they need primetime. Hey, it's a win win. It's not. Either way, because the Cowboys win. You know, the it, fans of the Cowboys feel good. And if they lose, then the, every other fan base feels good about it. It's never a win when I have to sit down and watch a Cowboys game rather than any other game I want to watch. Hey, Cowboys are an entertaining team. Sometimes. But, uh, I mean, I'm, Not all the fucking time good? when they're forced out of your throat, though. God damn. Hey, I like it. Obviously, I'm biased. But, um... No, I don't want to sleep on the Giants. I know I put a little bit more higher confidence than what I wanted. I actually, I switched this around. I, I kind of want to go lower confidence because I do think the Giants are a pretty good team, or at least a decent team. I think Gable has uh, really made Daniel Jones improve. Mm. I think he's a good coach. I think that was probably one of their best moves, picking him up. And the Lion- the Lions, the Giants, in my opinion – are a scary team, but I will go with my boys and Dak. I think Dak, when he plays a team in the division, I don't know if he just plays better or what, but in my opinion, Dak, when he plays play teams in our division, he just seems to win more than lose, and that's what I'm going with. So I got the Cowboys by seven. My score is actually a pretty high one. It's a 32-28 Giants. I do think the game will be close. So I put 14 on the Cowboys. Um, I do like what the Giants kind of did. Drafting high was really nice. Very good receiver they got there. Saquon, he really still wants to play and gave everything he has. So they do have a little something. But the Cowboys, they're definitely taking this game. Their defense is going to 
really smother New York. And the offense won't be bad, but it's not because of Dak. Dak is garbage. Um, Deuce Vaughn was a very good pickup for you guys, that little slippery back who kind of reminds me of uh, Philly's old boy, Mr. Sproles, Darren Sproles. I see a lot of him. I mean, him. Former, former Saint Darren Sproles. <laughs> yeah, we'll say that. There you go. But I mean, and then you had Micah Parsons on that other side, and he is going to be in Daniel Jones' hip pocket all night, just like he is with every team. Diggs is going to go ahead and lock up the number one. So it's an easy win. I put 14. So. Um, Tim, do you want to go first, or do you do you want do you want me to tell you why why this game ain't gonna go the way they're planning it? Um, uh, I'll I'll, I'll go. go. I'll go. Uh, I put thirty five uh, to twenty one Cowboys. I'll go. I have a pretty. I I think I I feel like I know what's gonna happen this game potentially. I put two on the Giants. Um, Gable's a god. <laughs> like he's a god head coach. He's a lot better than Mike McCarthy could ever be. And I think what's going to happen is the Cowboys are going to come out hard first first quarter, hit hard, get a big lead, and then kind of like slack for the rest of the game. I think they're going to slack for way too long, and the Giants are going to come back and win on like a field goal victory. I think Daniel I Jones has been set up for success. Time. He has Saquon. They drafted a wide receiver, Hodgson. High up in the draft, Darius Slayton's coming wow. back. They brought Paris Campbell in, who could be a fucking fun gadget player. They've been talking about how they want to use them in all sorts of different packages. They brought in Darren Waller, who I think is one of the steals of the offseason. I think that is a hell of a steal this offseason. Bringing Darren Waller for Danny Dimes, so he has that consistent, um, you know, just out like this fucking pass out. They have. Some good names on defense. Yeah, they have Xavier they McKinney. Have they have Dexter Lawrence. They have a Dory Jackson. Like they got names on defense too. Leonard Williams. So like it's not impossible for them to win, especially given it's a division game. It's week one and it's a coaching mission. I put two on it because the Cowboys should win for all purposes. But I'm putting two on Dable against Mike McCarthy with a new reinvigorated and what seems like a bigger and better energy form of the Giants. So yeah, I put five on the Giants as, as well. Um, I think I think Dallas will be a good team. I just don't think they're going. I've watched them the last few seasons. They always start slow. I think they're going to start slow here. That's going to be a hostile giant crowd. And, you know, I think it's going to take a few weeks to get used to McCarthy calling the plays. I don't think the office is going to be nearly as dynamic as it was with Kellen Moore. I always think that – I think that Dallas is best when they're a run-first team and they have Dak be a facilitator. But I think Gayball is a hell of a coach. I think he's going to have that team ready to play. He's going to have a game plan. And yeah, I kind of am going with the coaching, coaching mismatch here. Home field advantage, coaching mismatch, Monday night football or Sunday night football. Um, I just think that the spotlight is going to be on there and the Giants are going to show up. Danny Dimes got paid. Saquon is on this one year deal. Um, you know, I feel like that Giants offense is going to want to prove, like, hey, we're here. And I think Gable's going to have them up ready to the task to play. Like I said, I think Dallas will be a good team. But the last few seasons have shown me that they start very slow. I watched them play Tampa in that, like, 19-3 to game last year, the year before where they also did not start in the win. I think they will get wins afterwards, but I think it's going to take a few weeks for the McCarthy play call to take effect. Um... Asian put four on the Cowboys with the score of 28 to 17. Oh, yeah. Right, my score was 2019. My 20 score... to 19 with the Giants. The Giants winning on that that last second field goal on Mr. Gino's their quarter, their kicker, right? You know, no. Mr. Gino. I, I put 13 to 16. 
Alrighty, do y'all care if I start on this last game so I can I can I can jet on y'all? We'll be on the phone with y'all for a while. <laughs> you can jet on us, that's fine. <laughs> oh don't worry, you're gonna love you're gonna love what I have to say about this game. Yeah, you can you can start us off. So the Monday night game is the Bills at the Jets and I got six points on the Jets. I mean I don't know if the Jets are gonna be as good as everyone says, but Aaron Rodgers has been there all offseason. The vibes are high for the Jets. The vibes are not good in Buffalo. They had canceled some practices. Stephon Dick says he don't want to be there. The coach says he's concerned. And while I do think Buffalo will be good and probably be the better team of these two, I definitely think right now you've got very good and optimistic vibes with Rodgers and the Jets. you got very bad vibes in Buffalo. So I got a 21-14 game with Buffalo with them having some stuff to figure out after week one. And for most and least, I have the Commanders with the most and the Cardinals with the least. I'm sorry, Coon. I just I have to pick on Arizona. I don't think the Commanders will have yeah. the most, but I do think the Cardinals will have the least. <laughs> well, I just I just made this insanity all, and that's what I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, sounds good. Um, one of those two should have, but yeah, I got six points on the Jets. Like I said, I just think, I just think that you know, Rogers going to the OTAs, getting to blow the team up to like you know, it's like that team is very confident in itself and has very good vibes. I don't know if they win a lot of games in the first six weeks. That schedule's tough, but the vibes in Buffalo out of, out of the off season are Vaughn Miller's not not there. Stephon Diggs don't want to be there. Allen says everything's okay, but the coach says he's concerned. Like, my vibe on Buffalo is just very bad vibes at the moment. Yep, I totally agree. I went eight with the Jets. Just because, like you said, Diggs, Diggs wants out. So that's number one. That's a big hit on that offense. And Rodgers, he's got these young receivers clicking, and he brought in Randall Cobb to let them know, like, look, you drop a pass, he doesn't throw to you. He don't trust you, he don't throw. And so, I mean, they know that Randall knows what it takes to be with Rodgers for so many years and to be his number one target. And so, I mean, these kids are really just listening because Rodgers is tearing them up. So, I think the Jets are going to be pretty good. They're not a Super Bowl contender, but they're definitely a problem. I I see a vision. 30 to 24. I see a vision here. Where one of the, let's say Garrett Wilson drops a pass, the best receiver on that team. And Aaron Rodgers does what Aaron Rodgers does best and not look his way for the rest of the game again. Obviously, he's a petty little bitch. I don't, I don't buy into this New York offense yet. Because I want to see Aaron Rodgers not be insanely petty with the best receivers on his team. He did it last year in Green Bay with Dobbs. Yeah, no, even Green Bay, he had Aaron Jones and Dylan. So, I, what I'm saying is, I want to see him not be insanely petty to the point where he's going to sacrifice throwing the ball to somebody again because they dropped the ball once. I think I that think they that brought in. The Garrett, but I think the other receivers that will happen to He so. brought in Lazard and he, they brought Lazard. in Cobb. I think Lazard is the only good one that they added. That he wanted. I think he is legitimately the only good player they added. And he's not even like great. I just think he's solid. But I don't know. This this man this man say he wanted better weapons in Green Bay. He got better weapons but refused to give him chances. Then he went to the fucking the Jets and then he won all his old Green Bay wide receivers. I don't get it. I think the Bills will be fine. I think by the time the kickoff hits Everything that's the off season, that's just off season bullshit. I think the Bills are a professional enough team to understand when it's time to play football, you play football. Um yep. I'm playing seven on the Bills. I I just don't know what to think of Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't like his character on the field at all, I can tell you that. But I don't he's still a hell of a football like player. Yeah. And I I can't take that from him. But I, I just wanna see it. I wanna see it because I've seen Buffalo. They've given me no reason to think that they're not going to be the same team otherwise, other than off-season drama. But I don't put a lot of stock in off-season drama a lot of time because a lot of time, it's all just smoke and mirrors. So. I, I just, think it's just going to be a lot over. Like 
I just think it's the vibe I get from a franchise that's not used to being good in long spurts. But can I give you another? Oh, I put I did twenty seven point. Because I avoided him in fantasy draft because of Dalvin Cook going there. But my fear of Brees Hall just being so good that I cry that I didn't take stocks when I had a chance to in both leagues. That, that is a possibility that's on the board and a possibility that makes me want to cry. That's mm. going to make me vomit if I'm watching him throw up 30 a week. Yeah, especially when they add Dalvin. That's the only reason I stay away from him a little bit more. Yeah, same. Same. I agree. He is, I, it's just going to be, I just imagine the same thing in Green Bay. Aaron Jones is by far a superior, superior running back, but they're going to keep using A.J. Dillon because they're ignorant. Yeah. And that's the same thing that's going to happen with Brees Hall and Dalvin. Um, I kind of seen this as a 50-50 game in my opinion. I forgot about the dig stuff. Uh, I assume he's going to play, and if he does, then I got Buffalo with two confidence, and my score is 28-24. I don't know much to say. I see this game being a 50-50 game, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And oh. a, I mean, what, what's going on? What's up? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I also think that team is going to sorely miss Vaughn Miller, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I think Vaughn Miller comes back, I think they'll be a lot better. Um, an Asian put five on the Bills with a score of 28-27. But all right, gents, I love you boys. I'm going to sign off, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye. Have a good one, Caleb. Bye. Later. Um, I have KC scoring the most points and Arizona scoring the least. Hey, yeah, same. Philadelphia scoring the most and Arizona scoring the least. And Asian had Baltimore scoring the most and Arizona scoring the least. Don't you have Detroit winning most, but you have KC scoring the most? No, I have KC winning. I went with KC, remember? Okay, I thought you went with that. Yeah, he went with KC. I said I'd play the right. safe bet, and this is my shoot game of the week. Oh, that's so, all the games. That is all the games, and that is good for me because it is late. But before oh. you go... What's your Super Bowl MVP prediction? <laughs> My Super Bowl is probably going to be a KC Philly. And, I mean, Mahomes is going to go down as the greatest quarterback of all time. So the kid is still learning how to read defenses, and he's still torching everybody. Um, if you put his stats up against Brady's right now, he's got, like, 100 more touchdowns, 10,000 more yards. I mean... Yeah, he's on. He's on pace. Like Mahomes. He's definitely on pace right now. Yeah, like he is on pace just to be something we've never seen. And he has a co- uh, coach who is just great at producing amazing people. So I mean, I don't know, but I think Philly, with the team that they built, they got Ringo as corner to go with that secondary. I mean, they got a great D line. Great offense, so it's a big toss up. And MVP, it's gonna be Mahomes or Hurts. Yep. I'll probably Man. go Mahomes because I ain't going against them. So I'm gonna say KC and Niners. I think we get a Niners here finally. You think Niners? You think that Niners team can take on Philly? I think they could. I think because Philly, think about it this way. If they both make the if they might both make the postseason, Philly's notoriously bad for being a terrible defense in the postseason. That is true. Like they have like two young. sacks in the postseason. It's insane. Right. It's an insane statistic. That could be abused. I think the Niners are hungry for that. I think they got their guy at quarterback now. I think they're hungry mm-hmm. and they're gonna. For a while, the Niners have been right there. To yeah, I think. Yeah. In front of them. Exactly. I think they're really feeling well, it this he year. They got their quarterback have... solidified. They got everything solidified now, and they're just gonna run it. I think, I think they might win it this year. I would love to see Jalen go back because that's my boy. That's who I have winning MVP. I have Jalen still win, winning MVP while also maybe not making the playoff or not the playoff, not the Super Bowl. Right. 
But I think we, I, because I think the Chiefs are lost. I, I need to see somebody just throwing the Chiefs before I can take him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's right now, like, Mahomes, as soon as he became a starter, he just let the entire, entire league know, like, hey, this is it now. And then everyone wanted to talk when Tyreek left, and he said, hold on, let me get some no-names besides a little TikToker, and he still won a Super Bowl. He said, hold on, we have Kelsey. no one? Kelsey's still here. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey's still here, <laughs> and that's all. And that's why I like this game against the Lions. I'm like, you know, Chris Jones being out is big for that run game because they're already not that great at that. And we have Gibbs and Montgomery who, with the top three offensive line in the Lions, which is just so weird to say. I mean, I don't know. That's why I had to pick them. Just yeah, the team actually looks good. You got Ben them. Johnson, man. Ben Johnson is an offensive guru. He is. I'm glad that he did not take that head coaching job and he stayed where he was loved. So, but very yeah. grateful for that. Niners cheat, and I think. You know, me and I squeak out the Super Bowl win finally. Um. Well, I'm feeling a little crazy. I don't like to go with the same teams as uh, the last Super Bowl winners or Super Bowl players, even though Kansas City's probably the safest bet, and the Eagles. I'm gonna go with Niners and uh, give me the Jets. Oh God, with, uh, not the Jets. With, uh, I was gonna say Ravens Jets would be underneath the. For me in the AFC. Hell yeah. Um, man, they usually give the MVP to people in the Super Bowl. No, they don't. I don't think they give it to Curry. They normally no, give they it to. No. Lamar no, Jackson the one. Player. It's like who does the best throughout the season. Oh. So, yeah, like. Well, like Lamar Jackson well, won MVP. He hasn't made it to the Super they Bowl. Have a Super Bowl <laughs> MVP. Oh. Yeah, they, there's a Super Bowl MVP and MVP. Ah, then I was dead wrong. I'm willing to admit that I was wrong. Um, give me Mahomes then. I will take the safe bet on that. If if it was a Super Bowl MVP, you you know what I mean? Like you had to be in the Super Bowl. I was gonna say C Mac. Just throw it out there. I could see C Mac if the Niners were in the Super Bowl. Um. That being said, I think. Man, maybe I, maybe I don't want to say this, but uh, I guess if I had to pick a winner, I would go with the Jets just because, you know, Rodgers probably playing with a chip on his shoulders. I'd be so disgusted. I mean, I could sort of see it, but... I, I can mean, see it, but I don't, I don't want see, to see it. <laughs> I don't... I mean, at this point in the career, Mahomes is better than Rodgers is ever going to be. He's got more rings than Rodgers. He... Went True. up toe to toe with Brady. I mean, the guy ran in the last Super Bowl. What was it? Four hundred and fifty, almost five hundred yards behind the line of scrimmage because he had no O line, and he still made stuff. How many quarterbacks have dove and threw a forty yard pass and hit his receivers in the hands? It's so crazy how good Mahomes is. Still in a lab. I don't think people appreciate how good he is. Like I know, he, I know, KC fans love him. I know everybody knows he's great. I don't think people truly just sit down and appreciate how amazing and crazy of a quarterback I mean, that guy is. Vic. We've seen Lamar. I never we've got to watch Vic like in my day. I got to watch Lamar. So, like, it's what he's capable of doing is just incredible. And I told you guys before, when he was drafted, that dude, dude's amazing what he did at Texas Tech and how he could thread those needles was just amazing. And then he came in, he sat, waited his turn, and then now he's doing what I thought he would. So I've always been behind Mahomes and always will be. It does make me happy that it's coming at Casey's success because Casey, yes. I've always said, my favorite team in the AFC ever since they had uh, Jamal Charles and uh, fucking Alex I Smith. I like the fact that Priest Holmes, Alex Smith. Mm hmm. So, they just, I like, like Casey. They just Sammy like Watkins, Barry. too. They had Eric Berry. Eric yeah. Berry was a dog. Oh, dude. He said, fuck you, cancer, twice and came back. The dude is an animal. But, what they did to him was wrong. But yeah. I mean, business. But the dude beat something that a lot of people don't. And then he did it 
while playing a professional sport with some of the greatest athletes. At a high level. At, at an extremely high level. He didn't come on as a slouch. He came and hit you just like he would have beforehand. He picked that ball off and took off and outran everybody. So oh, yeah. he was still a dog, and he'll always be a dog. It's nice to see KC getting this. Yeah, it's going to get, give it another two years and people are going to hate KC like they hated New England. Yeah. Because that's what's being I'm right I'm now. sure there's still some people that are like that now, too. Oh, yeah, just, I mean, Mahomes has been at the top for so long now that he's just going to keep putting his distance between everyone until he reaches Brady, so. Yeah. He only needs a couple more Super Bowls. Yeah, and then he'll probably be hated. But that's what he's happens when you're to. good. Yep. If you're not hated, brothers, you ain't, so. you aren't doing anything right. <laughs> right. All right, boys. I haven't ate dinner, so I'm gonna go eat and pass out. So it's two thirty, and I'm old. Yep, you are. All right. <laughs> bye. Right, bye. Have a good one. And you guys too. That will be the end of the podcast. I'm pretty sure. We don't have much else to go over. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe. We're going to have an episode out every week. Uh, we're not going to do Thursday's predictions. Maybe we haven't figured it out yet. But the episodes are going to come out on Fridays or Saturdays. But this one's just coming out early because it's seasonal. We wanted to get yeah, and we don't know if we'll have Asian or not because of very different from where we were last year. I think he got a different job or a better, like, a promotion. Well, Fridays and One Saturdays, of... he said he's free those days, so I think we will, but we'll, we'll find okay. out. Works for me, and, and I'll be going on a new schedule, too, because I'm technically getting a promotion. W. I'm going to the overnight schedule. So hopefully I'm not dead tired when we do these. <laughs> yep. Well, thank y'all for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.